Hello everyone, this is Kikoto Mane from Team Get Rec Robotics, as well as a member of Team WPI. This is my event report going over the fights I had at the March 2025 NHRL competition with my Beetleweight Overhead Flamethrower Robot, Kill With Fire. It's been a while since Kill With Fire has fought, so for those of you who need a reminder, Kill With Fire is a control bot that uses a butane torch lighter on an arm to attack from overhead and blast the tops of his opponents with a concentrated flame. The last time it competed was almost exactly a year ago at the March 2024 NHRL event, and so I was really excited to put it back into the arena to hopefully put on some entertaining matches. As a reminder, the way the format at NHRL works is that everyone gets up to free qualifying fights, where if you win two of your fights, you move on to a single elimination bracket. My first opponent actually had to drop out of the competition, meaning Kill a Fire won by default and advanced to 1-0. So my first real fight of the day was actually my second qualifying match. My first opponent of this event would be a four-wheel drive vertical spinner named Fragment X. This robot may be new to NHRL, but trust me when I say Fragment X is a very dangerous robot that is feared by many builders. Outside NHRL, Fragment X is an all-star bot that has a reputation of just dominating local events and winning multiple competitions with ease. Obviously, this is going to be a difficult match, especially since I knew Fragment X would be using a special long fork configuration designed specifically to counter control bots like mine. Does Kill of Fire have what it takes to beat such a formidable opponent? Let's find out now. Oh! Kill it with fire going up against Fragment Five, X. Kill it with fire four, is a delightful three, flame robot. Two, one. Mm. Fight, robots, it's got, fight. There oh, it they is. have upgraded oh. and then they their wanna... torch. I was going to say, we, we haven't been seeing a lot of reliability in flame weapons today. It just seems like a bad day, but that is going. Yeah. And it looks hot. It is blue. a small weapon, but I want to point out to the folks at home a blue flame. A small blue flame can do so much yeah. more damage than a big orange fire. Oh, this is prime. Oh, can wow. they get in position? They've got to capitalize on this. They've got to oh. get in there and get the flames in place and burn their yes. opponent. Yes! yes, that's what they need to do. That's what we like to yes. see. Melted. You can see the paint burning away where that torch was. Oh, oh look at that. The flames right, right into the side. Beautiful work from Kokoto. Uh, kill it with fire, just barbecuing the hub motor on that Fragment X. That is not good. Let's them go at the end of the pin. Now, kill it with fire, very twitchy today. Having a hard time aiming. Fragment X having a hard time getting around such a big robot. Kill it with fire was required to add a little bit of protection to its fuel tank because they weren't in compliance with the rules earlier, and it's shifted the balance of yeah. the robot. They don't you drive quite as well. You can see they just keep flipping over oh with no, that. Oh no, the eyeball is gone. That is not going to be good for their, um, you know, their their. Uh, performance oh, this is a great pin and a great Ooh. torching. Excellent work. Now that's going to be building up heat inside the robot. And the thing that a lot of people don't realize is almost all the electronics inside of a robot have a heat shutoff. You know, they get too hot, they're just going to turn off. Of course, you can turn off the heat shutoff, and then they will just burst into smoke. So we'll see uh, maybe which option happens if we keep getting more of these pins. Now, this is really cool. This is such... Man, this is a dogfight. Yeah. This is a lot of great pins. You can see smoke now coming off of Fragment X. There are holes being burned in its top plate. Yeah. Ooh, but they are the not given. Hmm? I'm not seeing the flame at this point. I wonder if maybe just the weapon is it, blowing it out. It, yeah, that does happen. That's a very rapid spinning weapon. It's very hard to get the flame going mm -hmm. in the face of the weapon. Now, you know, an interesting thing that, that not everyone realizes, like in our heavyweight robot, our controllers get probably within 10 degrees of overheating in every fight by the end of three minutes. You know, we run everything very, very close to the edge. You want to get the maximum performance. If you're running maximum performance and then you get a flame right up against your controller, that's, that's going to change your uh, your temperature calculation. Absolutely. It's a whole Great different Great pins ballgame. here by Killer with Fire. Now, you notice that the, the weapon is continuing to not fire. It, it may be that that flame system is no longer functional. Yeah. I mean, you look at a flame system like that, I'm not seeing a very big tank, so it wouldn't be surprising to me if they've run out of fuel. 
Uh, that is also possible. And it's it's tough. The, it only counts against them if it's damaged. Yeah. If it's... And amazingly, Kill with Fire is able to pull off the upset and take down the legendary Fragment X. Now, something you may have noticed is I had a lot of issues with wheeling and flipping myself over, as Kill with Fire was pretty top heavy for this event, especially since I was asked by safety officials to add more armor around the tank of the lighter. This is a design flaw that I definitely need to address in the next version of the bot. Luckily for me, Fragment X makes a driving mistake and flips itself over, which gives me the perfect opportunity to attack with the flamethrower. After that, I focus on making sure my forks are always pointing towards him, because I realize that our long forks cancel each other out whenever we go head to head, which creates a scenario in which Fragment X cannot hit me with his spinner, but I can still reach him with my flamethrower arm. In fact, at one point, I was able to bring down the arm and just blast his TPU forks with fire. This right here is exactly what Kill of Fire was designed to do. Take advantage of the fact that many Beetleweights use 3D printed parts that can be melted. Overall, I'm doing a pretty good job just controlling Fragment X and pushing him around as much as I can. Unfortunately, at one point, Fragment X managed to hit the tip of the lighter which broke it. Luckily, I had a spare that I could use for the next match. As for this match, even with the flamethrower now gone, I'm still able to stand up the Fragment X and just pin him in place until time runs out. In the end, Kill of Fire's award to victory and what may just be the greatest win of its entire career. As you can see here, I put some nice burn marks all over Fragment X. I'm especially proud of the massive burn mark I put on the TPU Baleen Forks. In fact, the builder of Fragment X was even nice enough to give me the burn piece as a trophy. As mentioned before, I won my first qualifying match by forfeit, which meant by beating Fragment X, Kill of Fire was technically 2-0, which meant it qualified for the single elimination bracket. My first opponent in the bracket would be a vertical spinner named Ice Blade, which had an interesting triangular design. Because of how large his weapon was, my strategy was to attack the sides instead of going head to head. Now without further ado, let's get into the fight. We have another flame robot matchup. Five, We've got Ice Blade four, going up against three, Kill It With Fire. Two, Kill It With Fire. fire. Song of fight. Fire and Ice. Robots fight. <laughs> Great torch on Kill It With Fire. Such heat in there if they can get that. Oh, in the look right at spot. that pin. That's fantastic. Burning right into the top of Ice Blade. Oh. Starting a great plastic fire. This is exactly what Kill It With Fire is designed to do. Wow. The proof of design just like went off without a hitch there. Kill It With Fire having a few balance issues today. They had to add extra armor to their fuel tank on top of that arm, and they're doing a lot more wheelies than they'd like. Here we go. Another um, another pin for a moment there, but really having a hard time taking it to their opponent. There, there we is. go. Another great torching. See, it takes about 10 seconds for them really to get it burning, so they got to time it perfectly. Oh, interesting. So this is important. These two robots are stuck together. You lose the points for the engagement in terms of how the judges um, look at your control if you can't disengage from your opponent. Oh, turning on the flame there while trying to be disentangled. That's a little sneaky. He is. I don't know that the flame ever went out, quite frankly. Mm. It might have just been hard to see. Here you go. Here's another torching. Really lining Ooh, up these pins. This is looking going like a right good into one. the vents on the base plate. Good bit of smoke coming out of there. That is considerable damage, and yet Ice Blade does not seem to be slowing down any. Yeah, functionally, it seems fine. Really interesting strategy. We talked earlier about the difference between aggression and control. Uh, Kill it with Fire showing very little aggression, but any time it has an opportunity, it takes full control yes. of the match. Yeah, you'd have to say Kill It With Fire is controlling the match at this point for sure, although they did have maybe that they, pin not count. Maybe they uh, are hurt us. There's a couple of more uh, affirmative engagements, <laughs> let's call them. Ice Blade is going to have to get some hits here with this weapon to leave a mark on the judges. It's amazing to me how well the floppy arm on Kill It With Fire keeps the weapon system out of harm's way against Ice Blade. Yeah, it is impressive. You know, it almost looked like it took a few shots, and it still seems fine. 
almost perfectly shaped to avoid it. Interesting, the uh, flame seems to be out on mm. Kill It With Fire. You now. can see there the servo almost like moving around in the middle of the air. It might be dislodged from where it's supposed to be. Hard to tell. Interesting, the blade has spun down on Ice Blade. It's I wonder if this is because they're stuck and maybe they'll spin back up It here. does appear to be the case, yes. Oh. Another good pin from Kill It With Fire. It's not seeing the fire, though. No, it's only the arm. That's now that was a really good fight. Pretty much immediately, I was able to succeed in getting the Ice Blade side, pin it to the wall, and just cook its top panel and burn it really badly. This doesn't kill Ice Blade, which means I need to continue attacking him. There are several more instances in which I'm able to set Ice Blade on fire. So far, Kill of Fire is doing pretty well, and I'm having a lot of fun just bringing the heat in this match. But unfortunately, eventually things go south, as similarly to the Fragment X fight, in one exchange, Ice Blade is able to hit the lighter and break it. Obviously, this is not good, but Kill of Fire was designed to be an effective control bot, even without the flamethrower, and it spends the rest of the match being exactly that. Ice Blade just isn't able to get a good hit on me, which allows Kill With Fire to control Ice Blade for the rest of the fight. This dominant performance gives Kill With Fire the win by Judd's decision. Once again, Kill With Fire did some serious burn damage in this fight. As you can see, I melted one of the TPU forks, and of course, Ice Blade's top panel was very, very burnt. However, while I did win the fight, it came at a cost. Like I said before, both Fragment X and Ice Blade broke the lighters I was using during our fights. And unfortunately, I only brought two to the event, which means I did not have any more lighters to use. There was another flame for a bot at the event named Titanium White, which used a similar lighter and the builder was nice enough to give me one of his lighters to use. The only problem is that this lighter was modified in such a way that made it difficult to implement into my robot. I still tried my best to make it work with what I had, and I thought I had it working, but I didn't have enough time to test it before the match, and I'm just going to let you know now that when I tried it during the fight, it simply didn't work, meaning I had to fight that match without the flamethrower. As for who my opponent was, say hello to Vapor Trail, a well-designed four-wheel drive vertical spinner. Can Kill of Fire win this match even without its flamethrower? Let's find out now. Robots fight. Tentative start here. Kill it with fire. Not really able to exit the uh, blue corner here. Uh, a lot of Kokoto's strategy has been waiting for its opponent to come Ooh. to him. So I don't know if it's a matter of that or a matter of mobility issue. Oh boy, Johnny Supas going after that flamethrower here. The top to kill it with fire. Johnny, let us see it change color first. Wow, I can see one of the googly eyes is gone. Oh, Kill it no. with fire is winking at us, Lindsay. <laughs> I'm not sure if I am seeing any uh, sign of flame. I know that Kokoto saves the bulk of it for, you know, contact, but I'm not I'm not sure what signs of life there are. There are so many juicy angles here on Kill It With Fire. Yes. And with a great driver like Johnny Sumpas and Vapor Trail, that's a huge bolt. What's that bolt from, Lindsay? <laughs> that is a huge uh, high center hazard. That's a giant bolt. I can see the uh, googly eye here in the foreground. Oh, good self right there, Kokoto. Wow, I have not seen any fire at all. A minute 40 here left in this fight. Good pin, but still not seeing the flame. Yeah. Now, Kokoro Mana uses a conventional uh, creme brulee torch here. <laughs> As one does. It requires an actuator to kind of uh, simulate a human finger to, to ignite that trigger. So I wonder if the actuator might be damaged. Perhaps the uh, flamethrower is damaged itself. But uh, a little bit of desperate tapping, I'm going to say. Not aggressive, desperate, Lindsay. However, it's, uh, I think, been a little difficult for Johnny to find really good angles on Kill It With Fire to take advantage of, you know, this uh, compromised weapon. Yes, this is the time for Johnny Supas to come through and really shred. Looks a bit like Johnny might be just playing with his food here. 
Oh, there's a wire. Oh, oh that's not good. That's not good. You want the wires inside of Kill It With Fire. 30 seconds left. Good pin here. What a strange match, Lindsay. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to make of this. I, I wish that we had been treated to the color-changing technology on Johnny's robot. I wish that we had been treated to the fire of Kill It With Fire. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. Oh, oh, no. Because we enter the last 10 seconds of this match. This is when it's going to go to the judges. With an aggressive tap. Well, that was not the best fight I could have had. Obviously, without the flame forward, this was always going to be an uphill battle. I tried my best to keep the front point towards my opponent, but Vapor Trail was just too well driven, and they managed to land several good shots. One of those shots actually managed to get through the back of Kill With Fire and cut a wire on one of the drive ESCs, which took out my left side drive. Needless to say, this fight is going pretty bad as I'm now left crab walking without a working flamethrower. Despite this, I don't give up and I keep trying my best to fight back against Vapor Trail. I am able to get a few good attacks in with the weapon arm, and I do survive the full three minutes, but unsurprisingly, it just wasn't enough for me to get the win. And the judges rightfully awarded Vapor Trail to victory, meaning that Killer Fire is done for this event and it's eliminated from the competition. Despite being eliminated, Kill of Fire did have one more fight for this event, sort of. I put Kill of Fire into an exhibition rumble where the bots were supposed to try and pop as many balloons as possible. Since I didn't have any working lighters left, I just gave Kill of Fire a screwdriver because I thought it would be funny. I'm not going to show the whole rumble since it's pretty long and honestly Kill of Fire doesn't do much for most of it. If you do want to watch the whole rumble, a link to it should be in the description of this video. However, I did want to show this one clip where I realized it's really difficult for me to pop balloons by myself, and so I noticed Try Harder, a vertical spin that was having drive issues, and I decided to push them around and use them as a weapon to pop some balloons. The team behind Try Harder was pretty happy I did this, since they couldn't move otherwise, and we managed to pop six balloons together. Overall, it was a pretty fun rumble. And with that, Kill With Fire's run at this event has come to an end. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with how the bot did. The fact that it managed to beat Fragment X, a top tier bot that has won multiple competitions, already makes me consider this event a massive success. But more importantly, Kill Fire lived up to its name, and I had so much fun setting both Fragment X and Ice Blade on fire multiple times. I am disappointed with how the Vapor Troll match went, but sometimes that's just how things go. Now the bot does have some issues I need to fix, such as a wheeling problem and the flamethrower system being so fragile, but I think this event has proven that Kill Fire has a lot of potential, and with the right improvements, it can go far. That's it for this event report. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.